on today's episode of Watch Jericho. It's actually kind of nice outside. It's 42 degrees today. And today we are getting back on my Escalade. What is going on guys? I am Watch Jergo and this is my 2013, if I remember right, Escalade ESB I bought about a month and a half ago. It may have even been longer than that. I don't remember and I'm pretty sure you guys might not remember either. I also don't remember what all this truck needs other than the fact that the steps are down. We got to fix that. We put an interior in it. It's looking pretty good. I got the battery charged. It seems like it's holding up because I came out and hit lock and better than what it used to do and this thing it takes uh one of the most expensive ls truck engines there is so today we're going to buy our new engine i honestly can't wait to drive this thing let's open the hood up trailer brake this, this is not a bad truck this is going to be a really a really nice deal when it's all done anyway the eighth or the seventh digit of the vin tells you which engine you need and on this one underneath the hood here we have what they call the most advanced LS truck engine there ever was. Because after this, of course, they moved on to the LTs. Escalades being Escalades and not Suburbans and Tahoes, they usually are specced with the 6.2 or the biggest LS they can shove in them out of the gate and there's no question about it. It is, it's, it's better, honestly. I know it's the same truck, but the Escalade is better. Uh, and it does come with the 6.2 or the 6.0 and more power because you know you bought the more expensive car and you want it to go faster. So this is the L94, which has uh, DOD and variable valve timing, which is pretty crazy for a single cam, of course. But this thing pulls all of that off. Of course, we know these things usually last about 130,000 miles with the uh, displacement on demand because of the oiling issues that it causes eventually and I am gonna put the same engine back and it will eventually have the same issue. It might not, if they change the oil religiously, it might last forever. But uh, you know, most people change the oil on these things every 10,000, maybe even longer. So the engine will die if you, uh, if, if you do the same thing to it. Nice synthetic oils, maybe run some BG Dynamic and I bet you can make these things last forever. We're gonna put the same engine back. It needs to be plug and play. It's also flex fuel. The L94 does have that too. So it's got bigger injectors, of course, and it probably has a bigger fuel pump for that magic to happen as well. You need more fuel volume when you're running E85. So bigger pump, bigger injectors, shove a bunch of that fuel in there and you've got yourself a race car when you want it to be. So that's uh, one thing that does lend itself well to just throwing twin turbos on this thing and making a little bit of power. Now at this point, I don't think I'm gonna twin turbo it, even though I could have a cheap Escalade V. What I am gonna do first is get this thing running again. So let's head over to LKQ right now and load up a, uh, a new used engine for this thing and we'll start swapping it here shortly. I am missing the air intake duct. We're here at LKQ waiting on the dock. They're bringing out the engine here in a minute, my new to me L94. And as always, LKQ warranties this stuff, which is amazing. Uh, if we end up with a dead one, we'll swap it back out like they took care of us on the Jag engine and uh, that's why I love buying engines from them. Most salvage yards will do the same, but here I can just run down the street and pick up a new one because they're so close. Anyway, uh, it cost a little more than $4,000 for this engine because it's so in demand and it's a truck that everyone would fix, right? You don't typically just throw these away, you actually fix them. People still want them, they're driving them for their family cars, so it's kind of in demand and you pay a lot for that. I know I thought I was gonna buy this engine for three, but it's really hard to find them at that price. You have to wait forever, wait till somebody's parting out a truck in their backyard or something like that, and that's where you get the deals. So sure, I'm paying a little bit more, but hey, there's a warranty and that is definitely worth something. The one you buy out of a guy's backyard, he's not gonna answer your message again. That's just how that works. With this engine, we'll end up about 8,500, maybe a little bit more in this truck. Hopefully we can sell it for like 13. We'll find out when we get there. Beautiful. Yep, we are loaded up. Let's go sell this Tesla. Uh, I gotta sell one thing so we can pay for the other thing, you know? And we are here with the Tesla. It's the last time we are gonna see this thing. I've got it hooked up real quick. I gotta get it back into tow mode. So it does need power for a moment so I can shift it into its uh, neutral state. Basically, tow mode just shuts the e-brake off and when you take it out, it sets the e-brake. So, uh, let's see if it'll open up. 
Hey, yes, and the hatch. Yeah, so I've got some bags here since I left a couple bolts loose. I got a bag for the LDU cover, another bag for the canards, which are the uh, self tappers. So that should get this all wrapped up. And the shipper is here. You can hear him pulling in and we're gonna get this thing over onto a truck. And I bet you guys are wondering, I thought, I thought you were gonna part it out. Like, why are you shipping it out of here? Well, because I sold it for more than I paid for it and I don't have to part it out, which is a huge win for everybody. So let's get this thing loaded up and say goodbye. Time to do some sketchy. <laughs> Stuff. We, there's a, an aluminum bar that it's a one by two bar, but it's holding that whole car. Of that handle right there. Yeah, I am too. I am too. I'll turn it over when we get there. If the air suspension's down in your Tesla, this is what your clearance looks like. No clear. I mean, honestly, I think it's rubbing on the rail. This thing is gliding onto the trailer. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, you're good. Go. The Tesla saga came to a brilliant end. I sold it, made money, and we at least got to work on it for a bit. And I'd happily do it again tomorrow. I'll buy another one tomorrow if I find another deal like that and we'll fix it. Like one with only one problem, I'm 100% in. But that one was just a little too much for me. So I'm happy it's loaded up and that was hilarious loading it. I honestly, uh, he would let the slack out of the winch and the car wouldn't move forward. The battery's doing a rail slide all the way up that trailer, just like the new Gymkhana. Uh, you could see in the video, there's no light between the two. And I think it was just doing a, you know, a grind right down the trailer. But honestly, like the, the wheels are still touching, tires are still touching. It's not like it's putting all the weight on it. It was just perfectly an interference fit. So he would let out of the winch and the car wouldn't move. <laughs> it's sorted out, the car's out of here. It's time for us to get out of here too. Okay, the Tesla is gone forever. One of my main priorities was obviously getting it back out of Johnny's parking lot. Uh, I know he doesn't mind, but that parking spot that I was using was there because we needed to be able to push the car. It's one of the ones that he uses when he has to push cars as well, because you want to be as close to that door as you can. <laughs> you got to go push stuff around a lot. So we got that taken care of and we are back on the Escalade. Chalk went up for the EV haters. I turned a Tesla into a Chevrolet V8. It's, it's one of my favorite engines, what can I say? I was just taking a look at my new engine and thinking, that is the cleanest LS engine I've ever bought in my life. One that doesn't even need, you know, a wipe down, it's so clean. Look at the valve covers, no leaks anywhere. Uh, you know, timing cover, everything. All the usual leak spots. And then I was filling the truck with diesel and I saw this. This engine's been rebuilt. And they said it was, you know, it's been a little more than three years since they would have rebuilt this thing. It came out of a Yukon, I would say Denali. I don't see mileage on the Yukon Denali, but all I know is this engine does not have whatever the mileage was on that Yukon. And I am excited. How does that happen? It's like I won the engine lottery here. Let's get it unloaded and grab a forklift. Let's go pick up the truck itself so we got something to swap that engine into. Now this is the best way to move a dead Escalade. So let's fire up the winch, spool it out here, and we should have it loaded in just a moment. Except the batteries on the winch controller always seem like they're dead. There we go. The only fun part of this is trying to get this attached to the tow hook. I think I'm gonna need a soft shackle or something like that, but we're getting there. It's a long... Do the Michael Jackson lead. I was gonna say a lonely road. Oh. <laughs> no, the, the know, Oh. The Michael Jackson. And then I like pull back up? No, the, you have to face that way. Uh, you have to go. <laughs> I'll uh, fall over because I don't have a good grip on the chain. <laughs> That's DOT approved, right? I mean, it's got the winch hooked to the front, it's chained on, it's fine. I ran the test, it's tuned to the right frequency. In all reality, I'm going five miles and it's in park and the e-brake's set, we're good. I got her moved and by yourself, obviously that's quite a bit of work, especially because you can't push the thing when it's on unlevel gravel. 
So I had to, you know, unload it off the trailer, switch sides, get switch trucks, honestly, pull the thing backwards. But now it's at my dad's shop. So hopefully on Sunday, we have the new engine in this thing because it's here with its heart transplant and it's a pretty easy job. So this one is gonna be a win, unlike uh, the Tesla and the Bentley. The Bentley, obviously, it's still over there, but it won't be for long. It's been paid for and I'm just waiting on a trailer to come pick it up. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shopwatchchair.com for cool shirts, not like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you the next time. After we get the engine in, it should be simple to finish up all the other little stuff on this, all the fun electronic stuff that I enjoy working on. And uh, there you go. I sold the Tesla, made money on that, turned it into a V8, and now we're gonna do a V8 project for you guys. You ask for it, I'm doing what you ask for.